Hello everyone, my name is Kinza Claridge and welcome to my multi-part mini-series on what it's like and how to build a sprint car. As you can see behind me, I've got a brand new black, freshly powder coated XXX 8840 sprint car chassis with plenty of new parts here, getting ready for a fresh build and where we're going to debut in a couple of weeks time at High Tech Hall's Toowoomba Speedway here in South East Queensland. Now, in my opinion, building new race cars is very much a privilege, and I'm greatly appreciated for the opportunities that I have. And I would really just want to bring everyone along for the journey, what it's like to build a sprint car, how to do it, how I do it, you know, some tips and tricks for some people that have never built race cars before. As you can see, this is a triple X sprint car chassis supplied by Brad Hilda in Ormiston, southeast Queensland. Countless hours and hours go into building a sprint car, from fitting bodies to making components work to things that shouldn't, plenty of different things, and it just takes time. It takes lots and lots of time. And I'm gonna try and shrink that down into a couple of videos for some viewers to watch and understand what it is actually like to get behind the wheel of one of these beasts and to get them prepared, ready, built, everything. And first off, we're gonna start by fitting the fiberglass body. As you can see here, these white wrapped up pieces are all fiberglass body for the sprint car. This here is the hood, this is one of the arm guards, the other piece here is the other arm guard, the front scoop. There is plenty of pieces that come into a sprint car body. We've got the aluminium lower tins that go around down the bottom here and then the fiberglass body that sits around the top. Now sprint car bodies really are a work of art. From engineers and mechanics building things that are gonna help the car's aerodynamics cooling the motor, plenty of different things. There's lots of reasons why different chassis run different body kits. Now right here we've got a few bits and pieces of what it takes to build a sprint car. Now right here we've got a motor plate which is what bolts the motor to the chassis. We've got the torsion arms which are all suspension components. Front wing posts which mount the front wing to the chassis. Radius rods which are also components that hold the front axle and the rear axle in position and in alignment. Here we've got a KSC Stingray wing valve and wing ram kit. We've got steering uh, Gen 2 half box steering bracket, aero wing tree, tie rods, drag links, nerf bars, diffs, front ends, an assembled front end. We've got plenty of pieces here to keep us busy in the meanwhile while waiting on new parts as well. Now what I've got up here is a wrapped up black dash for the sprint car. And basically what this does is it mounts the gauges, switches, MSD box, everything that we need to hold for the sprint car, for the electrical components, etc. So I'm just gonna grab my Stanley knife and cut this thing open. Now this car is gonna be predominantly brand new, pretty much all new equipment except things like the diff and that, which are all extremely expensive nowadays and it costs a lot of money to get new ones, so we're just gonna reuse old equipment that's still in perfect condition. Unwrap first layer of plastic off this dash. Dead, look at that. That is beautiful. See now this, all this body is practically made of fiberglass except the lower tins. Now right here is our triple X dash. And what this is, is this is how the driver's seat from the cockpit. This piece right here is what the throttle bell crank goes through. So the throttle can go from the pedal to the motor. Gauges get mounted along this lip here on the dash. And basically here is what we mount our hood, how we mount it to the dash through these pieces here, Zeus clips through there. And so that's basically what I'm doing is I'm getting this fitted and mounted up, getting everything ready, get the Zeus clips sorted. We've got to cut out a hole for the steering box, I believe, on this side. And yeah. So what I like to do is I like to get my motor plate sat in just nice. And so when, when I put my dash in, I know where everything's gonna sit. And just so the dash can sit nicely with the motor plate, there's no issues when mounting everything. You know, just so everything's really, really nice. Because we're building a brand new car, we want everything to look really good. 
Now when it comes to sprint cars, not only do we want a nice car, but we also want practicality. As when we're working on these cars, we want things to be easy, nice to put together, and be able to change quick if we need to change something in emergency, like quickly at the track, or just, just things that need to happen fast, because we're in a fast sport. We're sprint car racers, this is what we do. We go fast. So now I've got my four titanium bolts sitting, the motor plate's just sitting in there nicely, not really tight or anything. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the dash sitting up here above the motor plate, get everything fitted, and we'll get it all sorted. So basically just gonna grab this piece and sit the dash in here like that. And it goes around these tubes here, and it sits in there pretty nicely like that. Oh, I've got to make it fit around this piece that holds the bell crank. And as you can see, a lot of this stuff fits pretty nicely. The trip, guys at Triple X do a really, really good job. And yeah, that's, that's pretty well in there. So now basically what I'm going to do is I've got to get the holes marked up for the Zeus clips. So there's one, two, there's about seven or eight Zeus clip holes that have got to be drilled so our Zeus clips can mount the dash solid to the chassis. The guys at Triple X actually made this really simple when they knew you were gonna be mounting these dashes by yourself. So what they did is they created this lip here. So then what the dash does is it does, you're not gonna mount it any lower than it needs to be because the dash is currently sitting on that lip right now. So I know that's exactly where that dash is gonna be. And so basically what I made for this car is this kind of pointy little Zeus clip here. It's not the best piece of engineering I've ever made, but it's a sharp Zeus clip. So basically what I'll do is I'll sit this behind the body and then you tap on the body and what it'll do is it'll make a little endeavor dent, whatever you want to call it, into the fiberglass body, which tells me exactly where I've got to drill the hole. Here, for example, you can see we've got a small Zeus plate where I'm going to sit this Zeus clip in, sit it just like that, and now the fiberglass sits nice against that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it a tap. And that has actually just made a little dent. I'm gonna give it another go. Just a couple of taps. And the sharp piece of the Zeus is actually making a little dent. I'll try and get it so you can see. See that little white piece there? That's a cut. And what that Zeus piece did is that cut a little divot into the fiberglass so I know exactly where to cut. You can buy these from plenty of places like All Star Performance and that, but I was in a bit of a jiffy and I didn't really have anything that would help me mount it. And the Zeus springs already riveted into this thing so I couldn't drill from behind the Zeus plate. So what I did was made this little piece. I just grabbed a Zeus clip that's got a wing on it. I'll show you what that looks like right now. Basically what, basically what I did is I grabbed a Zeus with a wing on it and just cut into that and tried to cut like a little knife style piece just to make everything easy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this dash off and I'm gonna mount that Zeus into there just to hold the body for when I'm doing the rest of the Zeus's. As you can see here, I've now got my Zeus's that I got from Brad Hilda. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure what the diameter of this Zeus clip is. So that is 10.2 mil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a 10 and a half mil drill bit now, and then I'm gonna drill that hole into the fiberglass. So now I've got my 10 and a half mil drill bit on my Makita drill, and it's time to get drilling. As you can see here is my mark for my Zeus clip. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the dash just sitting on a stool, just so I don't ruin anything. I'm just gonna drill my 10 and a half drill bit. Nice and easy. So basically, once I've got the dash all drilled out, now what I'll do is I'll grab a deburr tool, clean it up a little bit, not too much because it's fiberglass and it's very, very easy to cut way too much. Now, Zeus clip goes in. Oh, in, just like that. So after some double checking, this is exactly how this air duct goes. It wraps around the chassis rails, just like this. Sits in there tightly, which I didn't really expect because it does scratch the down tubes. 
but that must just be how they want it. Now, to me, that is a bit annoying because although you don't see it, when that nose cone is now off, that is gonna scratch like crazy along these down tubes. Okay, that is how it sits. And it absolutely scratched it to oblivion, which is extremely annoying, but what are you gonna do? So basically, again, now what I do is I get my knife like Zeus clip, just sit that in the Zeus plate under the air duct here, if I can get it. Okay, that's in there now, and now I've gotta mount this hood up, just so tight around the chassis, just scratches the powder coat like something crazy. And then, you can see there's a little lump here, Crack the hole through. How good's that? Perfect. Now I know exactly where I've got to drill my holes. All ready to go. I don't know if you can see that. Um, just there. That is the hole. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so I'll just drill my holes through there and then I'll get it all ready, mounted up. I now have the air duct completely mounted up, ready to go. There's three Zeus's, two on the side, one in the center. Use my punch juice. Now I'm all ready to get the hood in and get it ready to be mounted up. Next up, we've got the torsion bushes that have to be reamed and installed. So practically, these ones that come from Brad Hilda are really nice. If I can focus. They got a nice tapered edge on the top, makes them really easy to get in. So practically, all you want to do is line it up, get your soft blow hammer, just get it as straight as you can. Give it a few goes. Tap it in slowly, not too hard because they're very, very easy to break, so you don't want to do it too hard. Right, that's one in. Now we've got seven more to go. You really want to try and get them as flush as you can hitting it with the hammer because if you hit one side too hard, they will just crack and the lip of them will just break off and then you need to replace the bushing. Once all the bushes are installed, pretty much what we've got to do is we've got, got to grab a really cool tool. So basically what we do now is we get this really awesome tool called uh, Torsion Bar Reamer and what this does is it's got these blades here on the end and that pretty much just spins in the nylon bushing, cuts it out and makes it the perfect diameter for a torsion bar to sit in there and spin freely. And they've got a three quarter hex on the back so makes it nice and easy to, I don't know why that won't focus, makes it nice and easy to cut through it because you just grab your impact on the end and just spin just like that. You might be able to see these scratches here that that nose cone made from wrapping around the chassis extremely tightly. I don't know why they have to be that tight. So basically, Rima sits in here like this. You grab, some people like to do it by hand, I like to do it by the impact. Oh. So basically, you grab your Rima, you sit it in there just like that. Some people like to spin it by hand, that's why it's knurled for, so you can get a nice grip on it. I just like to grab a three quarter socket on my impact. These actually already fit pretty freely. But you can see it pulling out some nylon, just cleaning up. So basically what I'll do is I'll pull my reamer out, I'll grab a torsion bar and see if the edge of the torsion bar can sit freely in there, and it can. So now what we'll do is we'll do the front one. Goes in there nice and freely. So now, we'll switch to the other side. Look at that, that one don't even, you can't even catch that one in. That one should be perfect. Then this back one, needs a fair bit taken out of it, but I can feel it, it's really tight to get in there. When it's 
spinning really nice and freely with the impact, then you know it's pretty much it. And so now what I'll do, so I'll grab a torsion bar, go all the way into the front, just like that, and look at that. Spins free as perfect. And then I'll go in the back one, just like that. This one's still a bit tight. Feels like it's tied up that end. So what I'll do is now I'm gonna take the bar out. Free. I did just I did just realize that my microphone unhooked so if the audio quality went horrible sorry about that but while I was reaming them bars I noticed that the stand was pretty much spun 90 degrees one way and the chassis nearly fell straight off the stands that's just a testimony for how good and free these stands are these chassis stands are great we have two sets we've got this and on our other car over there Fantastic stands, love them. These King Rimmers are absolutely awesome and are a must have when it comes to prepping and getting ready a sprint car chassis. I'll leave the link for a sprint car one and micro one in the description for people to be able to purchase them that in the USA and Australia. But now I've got my bushes in on the back and on the front and they are reamed out nice, nice and loose, perfect. And that's pretty much gonna be it for this first episode. Just a few body fittings and sorting a few things on the chassis. Uh, I'll make another video tomorrow, just doing some more things, getting things like radius rods prepped, shock studs installed. Hopefully I'll have a bolt kit here, just waiting on some stock, toplinetitanium.com, and I'll be able to put a tie bolt kit through this thing. I'll get some, the wing ram plumbed, the wing valve plumbed, lots of stuff in the cockpit, like just a few other things, getting a floor pen mounted. That'll be basically it for this first episode. There wasn't too much that I wanted to get done. I just wanted to explain a lot of things and get everyone to understand what I plan on doing with this car and the content and the YouTube, TikTok, everything. And if you don't follow me on TikTok, it's at Kinza, K-I-N-S-E-R, and YouTube is Kinza Claridge. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. And um, I'm looking forward to making a mini series out of building this car. And I hope everyone enjoys and likes the content. If you've got any other suggestions, let me know because I'm having a lot of fun doing this. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.